I'm Lewis Canfield, and today we'll be seeing one of Patrick Ahern's most recent projects on Eel Pond in Edgartown on the islands of Martha's Vineyard. This is a very challenging project because the house lies very close to the water, so there are some very strict zoning regulations that need to be complied with. So Patrick, where are we? Locate us. We're in a section of Edgartown called Eel Pond. This was a uh, another cottage house that uh, has been here for at least 60 or 70 years. And the basic house itself uh, was uh, preserved. And this piece over here was a garage. And we've made it into living spaces. And then we've added a number of new pieces for new construction as well. So what have you done to expand it and yet keep it sort of historically accurate? Well, we're in the coastal zone. There's a section of the house that actually is in the coastal zone. And because of that, we really uh, couldn't raise the house up or expand the house in any way from what was already here. We tried to explore the idea of the boathouse that was added on over time, the idea of implied history, but specific to a boathouse vernacular architecture as opposed to something more formal like a gambrel or something like that. We walk from the front to the back of the house where Patrick has designed and built a casual outdoor living space. It's really framed by a beach stone wall that was newly created that deals with the change in elevation from the original grade to how we've kind of nestled the house down into the land. And we have our beach stone outdoor freestanding fireplace, blue stone terrace, and it becomes a very nice casual living and entertaining space that overlooks Eel Pond and out onto uh, Cape. As the outdoor living space brings the indoor living outside, the sunroom brings outdoor living inside. First thing we did was to reinforce that idea is that we brought the outside shingles in. And this is in the same plane as the original outside facade. And then the stone fireplace and the beach stone really says that this was the outside wall of the house, which it really was. And then we brought the blue stone floor in from the outdoor terrace. And we also brought in the beach stone used on the floor as well. The old beams and all of the porch glazing as if it was a, an open porch that was enclosed over time ties you into the idea of implied history and at the same time you feel very much as though this was an outdoor space. Now let's see how Patrick transformed the old garage of the house into the room he's most excited about. This was the garage of the house and uh, it was the most utilitarian of garages and I think we now made it probably one of the more important spaces in the house. First thing we did was to add a dormer that actually became the clear story for the assembly of the, of the cooktop and the hood. And uh, we flanked it with uh, the brick from the fireplace, which is in the outdoor porch room, and used the brick in the herringbone pattern as the backsplash for the stove. So it's in, in, inside outside again. Bringing that idea in, we introduced the old beams in the ceiling, kept the ceiling height high, and uh, it really is this just wonderful place to hang out. We've got every cooking device known to mankind in here, plus the TV to have breakfast in, two sinks, multiple dishwashers, multiple ovens, and warming ovens, and uh, tried to design the cabinetry so it really looks like old furniture. The piece behind us really looks like an old cupboard from something that might have been in the house from the 20s and 30s. We've got some really nice hanging lanterns here that convey a nice cottage vernacular and uh, I'm just really excited about how this came out. We're heading back towards the water to the old part of the main house. This space actually was uh, one of the original spaces in the house, and these were two small rooms that just had a narrow opening between them. But I think one of the, one of the successes of the house is this is the original ceiling that has this beam and purlin idea that was in this room. And we said, uh, let's preserve all the original ceiling in detail and try to incorporate it in a way that maintains the cottage vernacular. The other thing that we did in the house was we revisited the windows. They're the same opening sizes, but we changed the glazing pattern to uh, 8 over 12 in a cottage scale, in Scott cottage style. And that way, the size of the glass in the windows is more consistent with the scale of the overall space. But that also, it also looks very old. These windows look like they've been there forever. Right, but they're obviously brand new. 
we head upstairs to see the transformation of the old attic space. This was really one of the, uh, the hidden jewels that we found when we did the uh, selective demolition in the interior. This was actually all attic space, and these three windows said this is a wonderful opportunity to rethink where we were going to have the staircase. This whole assemblage of the triple windows, the new staircase, the old chimney, the new bookcase, and raising up the ceiling and adding the six inch wide beadboard and the wainscoting uh, just made this a, a great, great uh, way to link these three bedroom suites together. We head through one of the upstairs bedrooms and out onto the porch for the fantastic views of the ocean. It really just opens up the property to all of Eel Pond and the, uh, the ocean beyond. It's just really special. Well, Patrick, this is a beautiful spot. We've got a beautiful view here. It's another very successful project. Thanks for having us. Thanks, Louis.